Vulnerability scans play a large role in the field of cybersecurity. Whether you're a security engineer, dedicated vulnerability analyst, or even a penetration tester, it is crucial to know how to set up and run vulnerability scans, as well as know what to make of their output. Vulnerability scanners are tools with pre-configured checks, usually called plugins, that will scan the devices you set up for it against these checks to tell you if your system is vulnerable. One of the most popular commercial vulnerability scanners is Nessus, which is owned by the security company Tenable. If you're looking to become a vulnerability analyst or a penetration tester, you will likely be using this tool to conduct at least some of your scans. Luckily for us, Tenable allows us to use Nessus for free for up to 10 different scan devices, which is perfect for practicing using this tool in a home lab. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a Nessus scanner, conduct your first vulnerability scan against a target, and then go over the results of the scan to see what vulnerabilities were found on our scan device. So the first thing we need to do is download and set up our Nessus scanner. We can do this for free by going to the URL here. And once you're here, you can select the latest version of Nessus, as well as the operating system that you'll be running your Nessus scanner on. I'm going to be setting up my Nessus scanner on a Kali Linux box. And for this demonstration, I'm doing this on a Ubuntu desktop virtual machine. So I'm going to select the Linux Ubuntu AMD 64. But the setup for this Ubuntu desktop and Kali Linux should be the exact same. Once you have this selected, go ahead and click download. And this is going to download a Debian package to our downloads folder. So we can go ahead and CD into downloads. And we can install that Debian package by typing sudo dpackage-i and then nessus 10.8.3. Once our Nessus scanner is installed, we can start the service by running bin systemctl start nessusd.service. Now that the scanner is installed and running, we can go and visit the web management interface by going to https localhost 8834. Or if you scroll up a little bit in the setup process, you can see that this link here will bring you right to that management interface. We can right click that and click open link. And since there is no certificate set up for this web management interface, we have to go ahead and click advanced and then accept risk and continue. It's gonna take a minute to initialize, but once it does, we'll be met with a welcome screen. Once we're at that welcome screen, we're gonna select this register offline checkbox and click continue. And then make sure Nessus expert is selected and click continue. And now we're going to need to get a license key from Tenable. And to do that, we're going to need to register for one at this registration URL. Once you've gotten to this page, all you have to do is enter a name, last name, and email address that you control. It doesn't have to be your name. You just have to have the ability to access the inbox of the email that you put in here. Shortly after you selected get started, you'll receive an email from no reply at tenable.com with your activation code. The email will look something like this. Once you've gotten that email with your activation code, we're going to go back to our Nessus setup screen and select the offline registration link. Once we're here, we're going to copy that challenge code from the previous setup page, this string of numbers and letters here, copy that and paste that into the first text box. And then we're going to take the activation code from the email that we received and paste that into the second text box here and then hit submit. Once that is done, you'll get your Nessus license key. And you're going to want to copy from where it says begin tenable license all the way to the end of end tenable license. Copy that and paste that into the Nessus license key text box on the setup page. And then hit continue. You'll then be asked to create a username and password for authentication for the scanner. And this authentication is completely local to your host. So make sure you remember that username and password or write it down and then go ahead and click submit. And now you have successfully registered your Nessus scanner. So the first thing we're going to do once we're on this page is go to settings, go to software update, have automatic updates set to update all components, and then set your update frequency. I recommend leaving this on daily and then hit save. That will kick off the download for all of the Nessus plugins and components. Once that's been all set up and the plugins are downloaded, we can now create our very first Nessus scan. For this example, I'm going to be scanning an instance of Metasploitable 2 with the IP address of 10.0.2.4. If you don't have another device to scan and you would like to follow along with the Metasploitable 2 scan, you can learn how to set that up in the video that I made on my channel here. So first things first, let's start off by selecting this new scan button in the top right. And here we see a bunch of different scan templates. Some scan templates are inaccessible in the free version of Nessus, including the mobile device scan and any of the compliance scans. But we still have access to many of the powerful vulnerability scans that Nessus has to offer. The basic network scan is the one we'll be dealing with today as it is configured to scan for all vulnerabilities on a known host. If we didn't have any known hosts and we were just given a range of IP addresses, we could use the host discovery scan to find the active machines on our network. The other scans available to us include a credentialed validation scan to make sure our credentials work before using them for an authenticated scan. 
an advanced scan, which is just the basic network scan, but with more customizability, like being able to say which plugins you want to use for the scan, an advanced dynamic scan, which allows us to run a scan that only shows us results that meet a certain criteria, such as having a certain CVE number, or if the vulnerability has a CVSS score of 8 or higher. A malware scan will use plugins that look for occurrences of malware on a system, using known indicators of compromise. A web application test scan will look for common web app vulnerabilities. A credentialed patch audit will connect to the system that you give it credentials for and look for missing updates. An Active Directory starter scan can be used to scan a domain controller to look for any vulnerabilities in your AD environment. And lastly, there is the Find AI scan, which is new to me, but looking at the plugins here, it looks like the scan is looking for different AI tools and any known vulnerabilities that are associated with the versions of those tools. In this video, we're going to be scanning for all vulnerabilities on the Metasploitable 2 server using the basic network scan. So let's go ahead and select that. Here we can give it a name of Metasploitable 2 basic scan. The description and folder you save it to can be set to the defaults. And the target field is where we're going to give the IP address of the devices we want to scan or the domain name of the devices we want to scan. So in my case here, 10.0.2.4. If we wanted to set a schedule for our scan, we could click this schedule button here and enable it and have the scan run on a reoccurring basis. I'm going to keep my scan as an on-demand scan, so I'm going to keep this disabled. In the notifications tab here, we can set up an SMTP mail server to send us notifications whenever our scan kicks off or completes. But setting up this mail server is out of the scope of this video, so we're going to leave this blank. Moving on to the discovery tab, here we have the ability to configure how we want our scan to determine if our target is live. We can choose to scan common ports, all ports, or a custom range of ports. For this video, I'm going to select the all ports configuration to get a complete list of all of the vulnerable services running on the server. Next up is the assessment portion, and here we can select our scan type. We can choose between a default network scan or being able to scan for web vulnerabilities as well, or even run a custom scan. And although Metasploitable 2 does have a few web applications running on it, I'm going to stick to the default network scan just to keep the scan a little shorter and a little easier to look at. Then the last tab on the page is the advanced tab, which basically lets us change the performance of the scan. And since we're only scanning one host, the default setting should be just fine. Next at the top, let's click on this credentials button. Here, if we were to set up our scan with credentials, then our scanner would be able to authenticate to our host and do more checks than it would be able to if we were only scanning from the network side of things. So for this first scan, we're going to set up no credentials, and then at the end, we'll compare the results to a scan that uses credentials to authenticate and see how much of a difference it actually makes. But for now, let's leave this blank. The last button at the top here is the plugins, and these are the actual checks that the scanner does to look for vulnerabilities and misconfigurations. You can see the total number of different checks that the scanner will do for each different category of plugin types called plugin families. And as you can see, there are many, many checks that are going to be done against the device in this default scan here. Now that our scan is all set up, we can go ahead and hit save, and we can go over to the play button here on the right and click launch. Now our scan is kicked off and all we have to do now is wait. These scans can take anywhere from 10 minutes all the way up to multiple hours depending on the number of devices being scanned, your network speed, and how many checks are being done in the scan. Scanning just this one device here will probably take around 10 minutes. Once your scan is completed, let's go ahead and look over the results. So we can click anywhere here on this scan. We see our scanned IP address on the left here and the number of vulnerabilities detected on the right. In my case here, there were 173 detected vulnerabilities on my Metasploitable 2 server from a non-credentialed scan. Let's take a look at these vulnerabilities. Let's click on this vulnerabilities tab. And here we see all of the vulnerabilities that affect our server. To make sure that we're seeing the most severe vulnerabilities first, let's go ahead and sort this list by CVSS score descending. CVSS stands for Common Vulnerability Scoring System, and scores are given to vulnerabilities to give them a criticality, so we're going to want to focus our remediation efforts on the vulnerabilities with the highest score. The second one from the top here, we see that we have an Unreal IRCD backdoor, so we can go ahead and click that to get more details. At the top of the plugin, we have a description portion that tells us details about the vulnerability. In this case, it's letting us know that a version of Unreal IRCD installed on our device has a backdoor in it. Next on the list, we have a solution, which is basically telling us to read down the latest version of the software and make sure that the checksum matches what's on their website. They also supply us with some helpful links to give us more information on the vulnerability. And then at the very bottom, we have a plugin output, which is basically proof that the scanner was able to exploit this vulnerability. In this case, it's telling us that it was able to determine that the IRC server was running as the root user. On the right, we can find more details about this exact plugin as well as the vulnerability. A lot of the times when you're referencing vulnerabilities in this scanner, you'll be referencing by their plugin ID. 
In the risk information portion, we can see the different scores that have been given to this vulnerability, including that CVSS v2 score of 10. And then towards the bottom, we see that this vulnerability is exploitable with Metasploit using the Unreal IRCD 3.2.8.1 backdoor command execution module, as well as the CVE for this vulnerability at the very bottom. And all of the plugins on Tenable are going to follow this template of description, solution, helpful links, plugin output, and then details on the right. If we go back to our list of vulnerabilities and we look at the next one on the list, we have a VNC server with password set as its password. So here in the description, we see that the VNC server is running a weak password of password and a solution to change the password to a more secure password. And the proof was that Nessus was able to log in using the password of password. So a pretty self-explanatory plugin here, but definitely one that we would want to look at if this were a real environment and something that we'd want to change immediately. So our non-credentialed scan gave us 173 different vulnerabilities on the host. Now let's configure the same scan, except this time we're going to use SSH credentials to authenticate to our Metasploitable 2 server to do some extra checks. We can do this pretty easily without editing the first scan by clicking this checkbox on the first scan here, selecting more and selecting copy. And then we can rename it to something like Metasploitable credentialed scan. Once that's been copied over, we can select this checkbox again select more and configure and we'll see that everything copied over the same except now we can go to the credential tab and add in our credentials since this is a linux box we're going to authenticate over ssh so we can click this ssh button here select the password authentication method set up credentials of msf admin msf admin if you're running your scan against metasploitable 2. we can even do elevated checks by escalating our privileges with sudo and since the msf admin user has root privileges, we can use the MSF admin, MSF admin username and password again. And once that's been set up, we can go ahead and scroll down and click save. And we'll see that our credentials have been added on the right here. So we can go ahead and hit save again, and then go back to our scan. And then we can go ahead and launch the scan and wait again for another 10 minutes. Now that our credential scan is completed, we can go ahead and look at it by clicking on the scan itself. And we see this time we now have 469 different vulnerabilities affecting our Metasploitable 2 hosts instead of the 173 that we saw with the non-credentialed scan. So let's go ahead and dive a little deeper into these. Again, sorting by CVSS score, we see these same backdoor vulnerabilities that we saw in the non-credentialed scan. But if we scroll down a little bit more, we get to this canonical Ubuntu Linux multiple issues vulnerability family. So if we click on that, here we have a list of all of the different Linux packages and kernel updates that are affecting the server that we would only be able to detect with a credentialed scan by actually authenticating to the server and looking at the package versions. So let's sort by CVSS score again and click on this top one. And here we see an Ubuntu package vulnerability that affects different versions of Ubuntu. And if we scroll down past the description, we see that the solution is to update our affected packages. And the plugin output gives us the installed package as well as the fixed package version that we need to install in order to remediate these vulnerabilities. Now, if we were a security engineer or a vulnerability analyst, we would create a ticket to have the proper data custodian remediate these vulnerabilities, or maybe we would remediate them ourselves depending on our team size and who is responsible for the server. But if we were a penetration tester, we could potentially use this information to exploit the vulnerabilities in order to gain access to the system or escalate our privileges to root. All right, that's it for this video. If you enjoyed, feel free to leave a like and subscribe for more ethical hacking content, and join my Discord if you haven't already. I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you in the next one. See ya.